Okay, so we've come back again to our secret glen and we found another place to go to last week after a bit of exploration. So this week we've got a few different things to show you and we're going to get to this little camp that we found and then we'll switch back on and we'll show you a few new things we've got and a few new things we're going to try today. Okay, so you can see why we like it here. I mean, this is beautiful enough as it is. Like I say, we found somewhere a little bit different just a little bit further up. So I'm going to stop this recording now and I'll catch back up with you in a minute. But there you go, that's why we like coming here. So just as we're walking towards our little day camp, I've noticed these very, very small horsehoof fungus along this dead tree here. So I'm going to harvest a little piece of this because we will make a fire in a minute and we can use this for tinder. So I'm just going to take a small amount and we'll use that horse's hoof fungus in a sec. So we've got a few different things with us this week. So basically I've decided to up my medical supplies. Um, Wendy nearly had an accident last week, she got her ear quite badly. So this is the Helicon Tex medical pouch. We've also tried these as well. Um, we've got the Wayfarer all day breakfast and the Wayfarer meatballs and pasta, which we're gonna use for our lunch today rather than actually cooking something like pasta and sauce. We thought we'd give those a try, give you our honest opinion of those. So I bought all this stuff, so enough of this is um, sponsored. Again, the Wild Oak cook set, we found that to be very, very useful. Um, this is something new. This is a waxed tinder pouch, which I got from a very nice chap called Mike Brown off Facebook. So if anyone's really interested, what we can do is I'll give you a link to contact him. So I'm just gonna open this one up for you. So a traditional wax thing. I picked some horses hoof fungus, which I showed you earlier on. I've got a couple of cotton balls and a bit of chapstick in there. And also many years I've had this in my garage. It's a bit of pine resin and a bit of um, birch bark. So we're gonna try and start a fire in there soon to keep the mosquitoes away. Also, there was a lot of interest in the knife I was using. So you don't have to spend a lot of money for a knife. This is a Mora Bushcraft knife. This is the Ray Mears edition. Um, I've had this for, oh God, 10 years or so. Very, very cheap. I think you can pick these up for 10, 20 quid. So we'll get a little fire going in a minute. Might even show you that. And um, then we'll have some lunch. Let you know how we get on with that. Okay, so I've got a little tiny bit of um, cotton ball there. With a little tiny bit of lip balm on it. A bit of American fatwood, which I've shaved off into a small fire stick. A couple of shavings from that. And a little bit of birch bark and pine resin. So I'm going to use the polymath Spitfire kit again, see if I can get this going. All these little things here, I put in my little wax pouch, which I've got for Tinder. And as I walk through the woods later on, I'll see if I can pick up some more. So let's get a small fire going then. And again, this is purely to keep the mosquitoes away, nothing else, because I got very badly bitten last week. So you always start off with the smaller sticks and then I've got my larger sticks ready to go in a minute. So I might not even need the bellows today. There we go. Save boring you watching this. What I'll do is I'll just stoke it up and we'll come back and have a look at this later. So we've got a cup of tea on and our little fire there, keeping away all the insects. We're not going to get any bigger than that, there's no need. And that'll probably smoke from that, will probably last us enough. And of course we'll be responsible and make sure we put it out. So we'll have a cup of tea and then we'll show you our meals we brought with us and give you our honest opinion about those. Right then, let's try some Wayfarer all day breakfast. First time I've ever tried these, so we'll give you our honest opinion in a minute. So we'll chop this open, this is the Mora Raymier's Bushcraft knife. 15, 20 quid, more than a great range of knives, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Actually, just know it's got a tear pouch along the top. 
I am putting things down there that don't worry, I will clear it up after. So let's open this bad boy up. It looks very beamy. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Wife's pulling a face. <laughs> let's transpose this into our Primus camp kettle for cooking. Okay. I will admit it's tricky to get out. Very tricky to get out. And quite messy. Oh, well, it's just a few bits of bean and bean juice in there. Again, I will clear that up in a minute. Yeah. So that's what it looks like in the pot. Let's see how it cooks up. I'll put it on in here. And just as it's about to come off the pot, I'll show you again and we can have a, a true taste reaction. It's just lovely down there. The sun shining through the trees. You can hear the whisper of the water and the birds singing. It's just lovely. Spinning around. Mark's warming up the dinner. There's a little fire going there. That's the source of the water up here. It's quite steep, there's lots of little waterfalls cascading down the hill. I've been looking in the stream for a while to see if I can see any little brownies. I haven't seen one yet. Mark's checking out the dinner, see what it looks like. Looks a bit like those all day breakfasts you get in a tin, but we'll see. Just can't tell you how beautiful it is here. It's really good for the soul. Anyway, I think the breakfast is going to be warmed up now. So we'll actually see what it's like. Right, this is the dinner coming up to the boil. Okay, so we decided to be real slobs and eat it out of the tin. So it just looks like one of those all-day breakfasts you get out of a tin. Took about two minutes to heat through. Just by a bean here, okay. Half a sausage. It's okay. Like I say, it's pretty. I think this is supposed to be a piece of bacon or a piece of egg. I'm not quite sure what it is. Again, heavily drenched in beans. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. It's not unpleasant. Let's see what Wendy thinks now then. I'll give it like a 5 or 6 out of 10. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. It's like the same kind of things you get out of a tin, really. It's about 150, and this was about 4 quid. So let's see what Wendy thinks. Right, I'm going to give it a try. See what it's like. Um, get a sausage. Nice and hot. It just tastes like tin food, which I suppose I expected it to. Um, if you were really hungry and it was a cold, cold day, you'd be glad of it to keep you warm. I'm going to try a bit of this now. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but let's see. I think it's bacon. Actually, I think that was egg. I'm going to have one more mouthful just to see what other bits are in here. I'm not sure what that was, I think it was potato. How would you rate it out of 10? Well, yeah, so Wendy and I both agree it's not too brilliant. But we've also got pasta and meatballs, so we'll try that one next and get back to you. So stay tuned and we'll try another variant. Right then, so now we've got on the go, we've got the Wayfair meatballs and pasta. 
This one doesn't smell too bad. It was a bugger to get out of the um, wrapping again. Got very, very messy doing it. It smells right actually, so let's try some. So it's just been cooked up. This is the Primus um, L Tech camp kettle. And for making our cups of tea, etc., we're using the Helicon Tex um, little camp mug, I think they call that. So it certainly looks a bit better. Just by chopping a meatball in half. That's pretty tricky though. Well. The sauce is nice, the pasta is nice, the meatball, try another one. Realistically, no better than the out of two. Um, yeah, I'll give this a three out of ten, probably. So, yeah, I think Wendy hit it on the head last time. She said if you were cold and just been walking all day, it would be some food. And it's certainly fuel, not food. Um, let's hand you to Wendy now, see what she thinks about it. Well, not quite herby and bubbly. Um, so I'm going to try a little bit of sauce first. It tastes like canned ravioli, but it tastes nice. Um, I'm going to try a bit of the meat now. Just a small bit to start with. Okay. Mark's out of ten? I'd give it five. Five. Five out of ten. And if we were really cold and hungry, it would be quite a nice winter warmer on a cold, cold day. So, okay. okay, so I'll give more of a closer look at this knife. Um as you can see what I've done with the sheaf, I've wrapped it in five fifty paracord and I've put a piece of inner tube around the outside to make fire and also we always need cordage when we're out and about. And the bad thing about these sheaths is you can't actually dangle it from your belt unless you've got a very, very slim belt. So what I've done is I've put a little cable tie on the top and put a little carabiner on there so you can dangle it from your belt or stick it in your rucksack. So again, it's a carbon steel blade, so it's nice and sharp and very, very easy to cut your main sharp. And what I'll show you now is how to make a fish trap. So you take a large bottle, similar to this size, and what you're trying to do is stick this end in that end so the fish can go through. So I'm going to make a cut about two thirds of the way along. Like so. A bit of bait which is a bit of leftover meatball. Hopefully the fish like it more than we did. Actually on reflection, what we did say was it wasn't actually that bad. We may have given it a bit of too much of a bad press, but after we fried it for a little bit, it wasn't too bad. Again, did you get better out of a tin? I don't really know. So what I'm going to do now is just remove the cap. And invert like so and the idea is the fish sees the bait there's a little bit of water in there now and you can see it muddying up so it's making like a chum the fish comes in swims in there can't get out what i will do as well i'll put a couple of poles in it to allow the water to get in that way we can sink it nice and easy so what we're going to go and do now is set this trap i'll take the outside um, wrapping off and we'll show you where we're going to put it and hopefully we'll catch a fish. Now, what people generally do in these situations, it's generally a bushcrafty survival thing and they leave them in there for a day, go and check the next day. But we'll leave it in there for half an hour to an hour and see what happens. So I'll set this one for a minute and we'll carry on from there. So our fish trap has been buried in this little pond. Wendy's seen a couple of fish, she said was about eight inches long. You may just see in the centre of the screen our bit of bait at the bottom. So we're going to leave that there now and we'll come back in a bit and see if we caught a fish. Okay, so we've returned now. Wendy's going to get the trap out. 
So we're not expecting it to be hugely successful because it's only been there for about an hour. And of course we will be responsible and take it away with us. It's not looking like there's any fish in it. <laughs> but at least we've learned how to make one. Zero fish. And we'll leave the meatball to feed the creatures. There was definitely two in there, Wendy saw them about eight inches long. So who knows, next time we come back, we might even try a little tiny bit of fishing with a hook. So that's the end of our little day camp up on lovely Dartmoor. That's where we were just sat. As you can see, we've cleaned up and there's no trace we were there. Other than a little bit of ash, but we can't really stop that, unfortunately. So this is our little stream. And now, as you can see, Wendy's going home. Say goodbye to the viewers, Wend. Uh, and this is Mark from UKEDC signing out. As I said before, if you want to come and meet me here, I'm quite happy to bring you here. It's not a secret, it's just hard to remember how to get here for me. So contact me if you want to meet up. Please like, sub and share this video. I'm nearly at 2,000. When I hit 2,000, I'll do a giveaway. So I hope you've enjoyed joining us on our adventure today, and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. because of the babies there look just keep still ah look at him